Hey there, CFA candidates. Today, we're diving into a crucial topic, estimation and inference. This is fundamental for anyone in finance because we often rely on sample data to make inferences about entire populations. Yeah, I know it sounds dry, but stick with me. It's actually pretty cool. Let's break it down step by step, ensuring you grasp every concept thoroughly. All right, let's kick things off with some basics. When analysts want to understand a population, they often use a subset called a sample. Think of it as taking a small slice of a big cake to guess what the whole cake tastes like. A sample is just a subset of a population. Imagine you have a jar full of jelly beans. That's your population. Now, if you take a handful of jelly beans from that jar, that's your sample. And sampling is the process of obtaining that sample. Simple enough, right? Cool. Let's move on. First, let's talk about some basic terms. A parameter is a quantity that describes a population. Think of it as a big picture statistic. Sample statistics, on the other hand, describe the sample. They're our best guess about what's going on in the population based on that handful of jelly beans we grabbed. So why do we sample? Picture trying to survey every single person in a large city about their commuting habits. It would take forever and cost a fortune. Instead, we take a representative sample, ask them about their commutes, and use that data to infer the habits of the entire population. Sampling saves us time, energy, and money. Examining every member of a population is usually impractical, if not impossible. Instead, we gather data from a smaller group and make educated guesses about the larger population. Now, on to the nitty-gritty of sampling methods. There are two main types, probability sampling and non-probability sampling. Probability sampling gives every member of the population an equal chance of being selected. It's like drawing names out of a hat, fair and square. Non-probability sampling, not so much. Here, the chance of being selected depends on other factors, like the researcher's judgment or how easy it is to get the data. Probability sampling is more accurate and reliable. Under this, we have methods like simple random sampling and stratified random sampling. Let's break these down. Simple random sampling is exactly what it sounds like. Everyone has an equal chance of being picked. Think of it as the lottery. To do this, you might use a random numbers table. Say your population has 500 members. You'd number them from 1 to 500 and then use random numbers to pick your sample. Easy peasy. This method is straightforward and ensures each member of the population is equally likely to be included in the sample. Systematic sampling is a bit different. Here you select every K member from a list until you get your desired sample size. It's like picking every tenth jelly bean from the jar. But remember, since we're not examining everyone, there's something called sampling error. The difference between the sample mean and the population mean. This method is easier to implement than simple random sampling and can be more efficient, especially if the population list is ordered in some way that spreads out members with similar characteristics. Let's say you have a list of 1,000 employees at a company and you want to sample 100 of them. With systematic sampling, you'd select every 10th employee. This can work well as long as there is no hidden pattern in the list that could bias your sample. Stratified random sampling divides the population into subgroups or strata based on certain characteristics. Then you take a random sample from each subgroup. This method is super useful when the population has distinct subgroups that might behave differently. For instance, if you're looking at a bond index, um, you might divide it by issuer classification, maturity classification, and coupon classification. This method gives us a more precise sample, but isn't completely random. Cluster sampling is where the population is divided into many representations of the whole. 
you randomly select entire clusters, then either take all members from those clusters or a subsample. When all the members in each sampled cluster are included, this sample plan is known as one stage cluster sampling. When a subsample is chosen randomly from each selected cluster, the approach is known as two stage cluster sampling. This method is cost effective and time efficient, but can be less accurate if clusters are not well constructed. Suppose you're researching customer satisfaction in a chain of restaurants spread across a city. Instead of sampling individual customers from each location, you could randomly select a few restaurant locations, that is clusters, and survey all customers in those selected locations. It is one stage cluster sampling. Cluster sampling saves time and resources, but requires careful selection of clusters to ensure they're representative. Now, on to non-probability sampling. This depends on the researcher's selection abilities. Two major types are convenience sampling and judgmental sampling. Convenience sampling is all about ease of access. It's quick and cost-effective, but might not represent the whole population accurately. This method is often used in exploratory research where the aim is to get a quick snapshot rather than precise generalizable results. For example, if you're conducting a survey on shopping habits, you might stand outside a supermarket and ask people leaving the store. This is convenient, but may not be representative of the entire population's shopping habits. Judgmental sampling relies on the researcher's knowledge to handpick the sample. It can be more accurate, but is prone to bias. This method relies heavily on the expertise of the researcher to select a sample that they believe is representative of the population. For instance, if you're studying the effects of a new teaching method, you might select teachers who are known to be early adopters of new techniques. While this can provide useful insights, the results may be biased by the researcher's choices. One last point here, when sampling from different distributions, make sure your sample represents a homogeneous distribution. Mixing data from different periods or conditions can skew your results. All right, on to the central limit theorem, one of the cornerstones of statistics. It states that when the sample size is large, the sampling distribution of the mean will be approximately normal regardless of the population's distribution. This is super handy because it lets us make inferences about the population mean using our sample mean. Yes, even if the population isn't normally distributed. Generally, if your sample size is 30 or more, you're good to go. The sample mean equals the population mean, and the standard deviation of the sampling distribution is the population standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. We call this the standard error. If you know the population standard deviation, great. If not, you use the sample standard deviation to estimate it. Just remember, standard deviation measures how spread out your data is, while standard error measures the accuracy of your sample mean as an estimate of the population mean. Here's an example to make it clearer. Imagine you're conducting a study on the average test scores of students in a large school district. You take a sample of 50 students and find the mean score. The standard error tells you how much the mean score of your sample is likely to vary from the true population mean value if you were to take multiple samples. Last but not least, let's talk about resampling techniques like bootstrapping and jackknife. Resampling repeatedly draws samples from the observed data for statistical inference. Bootstrapping does this by drawing samples with replacement. Each observation can be drawn more than once. This method is great for estimating standard errors and constructing confidence intervals without relying on analytical formulas. Imagine you're analyzing a stock portfolio with monthly returns for the past year. You've got 12 data points. 
To estimate the standard error of the mean return, you use bootstrapping. First, you randomly draw 12 returns from these data points with replacement, meaning some returns might be picked more than once. Calculate the mean for this resample. Repeat this process, let's say, 1,000 times to get 1,000 different means. The standard deviation of these 1,000 means is your bootstrapped standard error. This method helps you estimate variability more accurately without relying on strict assumptions about the data distribution, which is super useful in finance where data can be unpredictable. The jackknife method is similar, but leaves out one observation at a time. It's used to reduce bias and find standard errors and confidence intervals. Unlike bootstrapping, it doesn't put observations back into the sample. Now, let's consider the jackknife method. Suppose you want to estimate the standard error of the mean return of a mutual fund over the past five years. Here's how you can apply the jackknife technique. First, calculate the mean annual return using all five years of data. Next, systematically leave out one year of data at a time and calculate the mean return for the remaining four years. Repeat this process for each year, resulting in five different mean returns. Use these leave one out means to compute the jackknife estimate of the standard error. This method helps you understand the variability and reliability of the mutual fund's mean return, showing how each individual year influences the overall performance. That was a lot, but you guys did great. Remember, understanding sampling is crucial because it forms the backbone of how we make inferences about larger populations from smaller samples. To solidify your understanding, practice with examples from the CFA curriculum. Work through problems to see these concepts in action. Applying these methods in real-world scenarios will make them second nature. All right, if something pops up later, don't hesitate to ask. Have a great day, everyone.